If I hear one more person praising the radar assisted cruise control on the new KTM 1290 Super Adventure S, I'm gonna. What's up my biker friends and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk about the 2021 KTM 1290 Super Adventure S that was just recently announced. So if you want to hear my first thoughts and answer the question, would I be interested in buying it, then stay tuned. Only been a handful of people that have actually ridden the bike. Uh, there's been a few press people that were invited to Fuerteventura. I was not one of them, so I haven't ridden the new KTM yet. So all I can do is just uh, take the uh, information that's on the internet, just as you guys, and just you know have my thoughts about them. There was a big talk about all the things that have changed on the bike. KTM's talking about 90% of the bike have been changed and revamped. Um, I'm not quite sure if that's necessarily the case and I think we have to remind ourselves what uh, the main driver was to actually upgrade the bike and that was the new emissions law in Europe. The Euro 5 norm is now mandatory for all bikes that are registered this year. KTM and Ducati were pretty late to the game. Some manufacturers were already there with bikes last year that would actually conform to the new regulations and its emissions and exhaust and also emissions and sound and noise. So much of the changes that have been made to the motor and, and the exhaust systems is to make it compliant to the new regulation. And that usually means quieter bike usually means less power so kudos to them that they actually kept the power and pretty much the torque the same as in the predecessor but it comes with additional weight um, just as the 790 when it was upgraded to the 890 I think added a few kilograms it's five kilograms now for the 1290 Super Adventure S that it's heavier and uh, some of the design changes I'm sure that they have made is to sort of it's to sort of compensate for the additional weight increase meaning making the engine a bit lighter, you know, looking at sort of rear frame structure made out of lighter aluminum. So that probably helps to uh, compensate a little bit for the weight increase that they had to put in just to make it compliant with the new Euro 5 standard here in Europe. Now, when it comes to real design changes on the bike, there's really the only the one thing that I see that is really relevant to us as riders, and that's the tank design. Now, just as the 790 and the 890 series, the 1290 will have an upgraded tank design. It's a split tank design that worked quite well on the 790 already and on the 890 of course so some of the earlier pictures that we saw on the internet was pointing at that to be one of the major changes and it looks like they've done that now and the reason why I think that is interesting is because it will change the way how the bike behaves especially at low speeds a lower center of gravity is definitely something that's beneficial on a large adventure bike like this now I wouldn't expect Sort of low speed handling that you can see on a BMW GS. Um, the GS carries the weight really low in the frame, that's because of the boxer, the two cylinder inline engine that sits very low in the frame. The engine is the heaviest part of the bike, so if that sits really low in the frame, it gets a really sort of bicycle like handling despite the heavy weight of these large adventure bikes. Now, so I wouldn't expect that on the KTM, but I'm sure it's a noticeable difference for road riding. That may just make sense if you're just going really slow on the roads. But I think for off-road riding, that's really going to be interesting to see how much of an impact that has because that's really when you need it. And that is the main reason why they put that on the 790 because it's it's a much more off-road oriented motorcycle. And uh, that's where the major benefits come in. But the R model, the off-road version of the 1290 has not yet been announced. So we don't know the, uh, the specs yet, but just taking from what we know about the S model, it's going to be very similar. I'm sure it's also going to be increased weight. So that means that the KTM is probably going to lose its crown from the best uh, power to weight ratio on these large adventure bikes to Ducati, which I think that bike puts out 170 horsepower. And it's actually lighter than the KTM that was announced by a few kilograms. Now let's talk about some of the other changes now, some of the other major changes that were made is in the electronics department. This bike that I'm riding right now and the latest iteration of the 1250 uh, GS, they come with the uh, top of the line electronic system by Bosch and Ducati is also using Bosch. So that's already state of the art we're providing now. But of course, with every iteration of bikes, there are incremental changes and improvements on the ABS system and the recording ABS and, and the traction control. And those are, I think, are welcome changes. Now, you're not gonna need most of these for daily riding, but it's good to know that they have your back just in case you hit a corner too fast and you really have to slam the brakes. You can know that there's an ABS system that will prevent the, the front wheel from locking up. Of course, if you go too crazy on it, you can still fly out of a corner, but it will help you. It's a nice safety net to have. So I'm really glad to have these changes in there. 
but compared to our current model I don't think that the differences are gonna be that huge I would say now they also added uh, a few new features and one of the features is the rally mode that we already have seen on the uh, mid-class adventure bikes and I think that's quite great now if you've seen the review of this bike I'm using a dongle to keep my off-road setting every time I turn off uh, traction control and I put the ABS in off-road mode without a dongle it would always default back to the default settings and you know if you stall your bike if you're riding off-road uh, that can be quite annoying if you think you have sort of your, uh, your ABS turn off and your traction control off and all of a sudden it's back on again. So it's nice to know that there's a rally mode that will hopefully then save the settings and then you have a lot more sort of incremental changes that you can make to your traction control and just kind of customize it uh, to your liking. I think that's quite nice. I think you have to pay extra for it. It doesn't come standard. That's really cool. And yes, we are going to talk about the radar assisted cruise control. <laughs> now I think that's one of the most useless features on this motorcycle. I cannot remember a single time riding this KTM or the BMW for that matter where I actually wanted to follow a vehicle at the same speed. You don't get a 160 horsepower motorcycle just to follow along in traffic, at least I don't. So it's something that I could do without. Now it comes standard in the new S model. So for those people that like to have it, it's nice that they don't have to pay extra. But uh, you know, for me, I could probably save the 500 euros extra that it would probably cost and just have uh, you know something else instead the quick shifter that's something that is actually quite useful i think well, a lot more people would benefit from a quick shifter than they would from a radio assisted cruise control i'll be happy to try it out and see if that changes my mind now there's another thing that was uh, if you read between the lines that caught my attention i'm not quite sure how that would actually pan out once the options are available but i saw some article that talked about the suspension system and that there is more customizability on the S model now when it comes to suspension. Now I'm not quite sure what that exactly means but I'm hoping what it would mean is that uh, you have some influence over the spring rate that you can get in and that there's customization options to change your suspension system. That's one of the things now after riding this bike off-road a lot that I wish this bike had is some kind of aftermarket solution to customize the suspension setup. Now this is the semi-active suspension. It works really well on the road and it is absolutely no complaints I have with that. Um, you know, going through the settings and the prelim settings and uh, just ch changing um, how the suspension system reacts on the road, it works really, really well. Oh, that's another 1290, good to see. <laughs> And lots of motorcycles out today because it is crazy and it's uh, the end of February and I'm looking at 17 degrees C. It is absolutely insane. A week ago we had temperatures going down to minus 10 degrees C and there was ice and snow everywhere and a week later we have 17 degrees Celsius and uh, we can ride on motorcycles. It's absolutely insane but I'm not going to complain. I'm actually happy to be out uh, finally riding this bike. Um, this is basically the first time I'm riding the bike this year so no complaints here at all. Now back to the suspension settings. Now when you ride off-road you hit the limit of what the S can do off-road. Now it's not like you can't keep riding your off-road tracks, you absolutely can, but you wish for uh, a bit more responsive uh, suspension setup and especially when you compare it to the R model. I was riding Thomas's older 1190R and uh, it's so much better tuned for off-road riding than this bike. It just this guy and you cannot really change anything on the S model now the R model of this series you can uh, tune you can put different spring in, so springs in you can tune the uh, suspensions in I have it tuned by a professional uh, you can swap it out entirely if you feel like it you can put the two attack extreme shocks in there and and four cartridges It'll set you back three and a thousand euros, but at least there's an option there that you can tune your suspension system. So I wish this bike had more option on the aftermarket. It doesn't. Maybe there's some customization options right from the get-go, but we'll have to wait for the details on that. So I find that quite interesting. Now, last but not least, would I be interested in in buying a new uh, 2021 model, especially owning this one right now? From what I see right now, it's probably no. From where I am right now but of course I have to write it and check it out also if the new model finally hits the dealerships there's a good chance you get one of these bikes at a good discount um, and considering sort of the, the incremental 
improvements that are actually usable for us as riders are small, uh, you might actually be better off getting one of these older ones. And there's a few things that the old bike uh, does better than the new one. It is a bit lighter, which is nice. It also will probably have better sound because of all the emissions law. The exhaust note is it is supposed to sound but not as good as this one. I haven't heard it yet, but it's not as nice as this one. So if you appreciate good uh, exhaust sound, the older model is a much easier way to get there legally uh, and have uh, have decent sound. So I wouldn't write off the old ones at the moment. Also, if I'm actually thinking about upgrading, I wouldn't go for the S model this time again. I would probably go for the R model. Um, I've gotten uh, very much into riding these bikes off-road, really enjoy doing it. And like I said, I, I wish I had better suspension. So if I do upgrade, it's very likely to be the R model and a good chance this is probably gonna be one of these models, um, a previous model, maybe even the pre-owned, because the way um, I ride this bike, uh, it would just kinda hurt too much uh, taking a brand new spanking bike and, and do the stuff with it that I do with this bike, which is already a few years old. So uh, <laughs> we'll see. Um, I'll keep you posted on that one. But for now, that's what I think about the bike. Um, I'm sure there's going to be more news coming out in the next weeks or months and there will definitely be a chance for me to ride one of these and of course I would like to ride it on road but I would definitely like to try it off road as soon as the R model is announced and then give you a full update. Alrighty guys this is it for this video if you like the video smash that like button if you aren't already please subscribe to the channel guys I'll see you in the next video thank you so much for watching ride safe and stay awesome. Yeah.